Before I get into today's episode about Alexander, I just want to let you guys know that today's episode is sponsored by SeatGeek. So, if you've never used SeatGeek before, all you have to do is enter a promo code JKS, and you can save 20 bucks off of your first purchase. What SeatGeek is, it's it's the best place to get tickets to uh, concerts, to sporting events. So, if that's something you're interested in, the link is in the description below. Just click on that, it'll take you to the website. And if you enter the promo code JKS, it'll take $20 off of your first time purchase. And anyways, back to your regularly scheduled video. Jair Alexander is quickly turning into one of, if not the best young corner in the NFL right now. He is playing at a very high level, despite only being 22 years old, and it's, it's pretty impressive and definitely fun to watch. I often feel like sometimes drafting a cornerback can be one of the most difficult things to do, because sometimes corners are great in college, but end up only being so-so in the NFL, but... Alexander has definitely performed pretty well so far in his NFL career. So let's just start off with what I like about him, and we'll start things off with this play. Kind of what I like about him is he is only 5'10". Typically, I do like some taller corners, but at the same time, I feel like he plays big despite not being the tallest guy. And I'll show you what I mean with this play, where it's going to be a cover 2 zone, so that's the zone that Alexander is in charge of covering. And that's important, because there is a chief that's going to be running a route that's going to get into Alexander's zone, but... Not just any Kansas City player, that's Travis Kelsey, the big bad tight end. You know, he's not a guy that you want to go against. He's There's definitely a height advantage and a size advantage in terms of this matchup. Travis Kelsey is 7 inches taller and 60 pounds heavier than Alexander. So, I mean, this is actually a huge mismatch just in terms of size. But one of the things you'll notice is that right when Kelsey gets into Alexander's zone, look at Alexander. He's the one who's initiating this contact, not Kelsey. When he puts his arms out like there, there's only a couple of things Kelsey can really do here. I mean, it's clear at this point Kelsey is cutting in some direction as he's turned his body. It's possible he'll just continue running deep, but Alexander trusts himself that if Kelsey does end up running deep, that Alexander can keep up with him. At least long enough until he has to because he has safety help behind him. So he doesn't have to worry about that too much. He trusts his safety behind him and he trusts himself that if it's only a few yards behind him, he can keep up. So instead, he knows that what he has to worry about is Kelsey potentially cutting here as he is doing. And so him creating that contact means that Kelsey, no matter where he cuts, Alexander is going to have some sort of idea where he's going to go. And since Kelsey is going to be cutting back in, this now means that Alexander, he's going to have to jump up and try to knock this ball away. So this is going to be really one step. That's what it's going to come down to. Alexander is going to have to try to do his best to jump in front of a guy who is 7 inches taller than him. So, you know, the reach advantage is definitely in Kelsey's favor. I know I keep bringing that up, but... The reality is, and that's important in football, it's a big man's game, and Alexander does not have the height that Kelsey does. But he can make up for it with his quickness. Watch how he's able to step in front of Kelsey and knock that ball away. When he gave up no separation, it doesn't matter, he's still able to knock that ball away. So while typically on a play like that, you know, the reason why Matt Moore made that throw was just because he trusted the bigger guy, but you can make up for size with quickness, especially with two safeties deep, where you don't really have to worry too much about getting burned deep. Just a smart play by Alexander, understanding his situation, and he's just an athletic player enough that he didn't create enough separation for Kelsey to make that catch. He's not afraid to create some contact, and this play will be a perfect example of it, as it's going to be man coverage, and that's where Alexander is and where his assigned man is. And this is key because that's the route he's going up against, a great route to beat man coverage. There's a cut over the middle of the field, which means it's a good angle for Stafford to try to hit it, and so that's what Stafford is going to look for. But again, Alexander, not afraid to create some contact. Watch how right when this ball is snapped, he puts his hands on his receiver. This time it's actually a much more favorable matchup where Marvin Jones is also a little bit taller. He's 6'2", but they weigh around the same. So the weight part of it is pretty much similar, which is what matters when creating contact. According to Google, Alexander is just 3 pounds less than Jones despite being 4 inches smaller than him. So he's a little bit bigger, but just not quite as tall. And so when he creates that contact, again, this is the situation where when you go forward like that, it does make things easier to run around you. However... Obviously, that's not that big of a deal since there's two safeties who are deep. It's not the end of the world. There really wouldn't be that much room for Stafford to make a throw if Alexander does get beat deep. He just has to take away anything shallower. And so this really helps limit that separation. And so while there is kind of a small window where Stafford can try to fit it through, I like how Alexander is just able to take that first step. It's a great step. He's able to lunge out and knock the ball away. I'll show the other angle of this play too because that'll give you kind of a better angle to see how he's able to just get his hand in there and knock it away. And, you know, I also like how Alexander fights for the ball and makes sure he picks it up. Just because you never know. Fumbles are so weird in the NFL these days. Just 
if the ball's on the ground, pick it up because you really do never know. So yeah, that's kind of what I like about him. I know the height thing might be a little bit of a worry. That's one of the worries I had when the Packers initially drafted him. I do like corners to be usually around six feet or taller personally, but those extra couple inches don't matter too much as long as you're still strong enough, physical enough, and also quick enough, and Alexander is all of those things. And one thing I like about Alexander is a play like this, which actually is a play where he gets speed, and you'll see why once this play develops, where that's where he is. He's going up one-on-one -on -one against Amari Cooper, who ever since he's put on a Cowboys uniform has turned into one of the better receivers in the NFL, and he's a great route runner, and you're going to see it here. Cooper's going to have a good first step where he sort of fakes as though he's going up, but then cuts in very quickly, and at this point, he's in good shape. I mean, it's already going to be a route that's going to cut to the inside, so Alexander being on the outside, I mean, that's just what you want if you're Amari Cooper. It was just a great piece of route running. It's what Cooper does. He does this to every corner. It's going to happen. You're going to get beat. If you're Alexander, don't get discouraged here. You see a lot of guys try to grab on and get a holding penalty because they don't want to give up a big gain, but that's not what you should do. Just come back. It's never too late to come back, and watch how he's going to do that. Well, yes, Cooper is going to get open. The throw is a little bit behind Cooper. He doesn't make the catch, and Alexander gets the interception. Again, not a perfect play from Alexander by any means. He got beat. There was separation, and he just got a little bit lucky with the way it worked out, and the ball just happened to bounce his way. So yes, he got lucky, but at the same time, in the NFL, oftentimes you make your own luck, and he put himself in a position where he could get lucky by hustling back, getting in position, and being able to make a catch. So even though that was a worse play than the past two I showed you, that ended up being a positive play in terms of what the actual outcome was, just because, you know, the ball bounced his way. And I mean, listen, that's not going to happen every time. That's not even going to happen a good percentage of the time, but it will happen a percentage of the time. And while Cooper did get the better of Alexander a couple times early on in that game, Alexander really locked down pretty much from the second quarter on, and this one was a great example of it. It's once again man coverage, and once again, Alexander is going up one-on-one -on -one against Cooper. So this is definitely a, a big-time matchup. Alexander wants to prove that he can go up against true number one receivers, and for Cooper, he's going to run that route right there, which is good against man coverage. He's on the outside this time, but other than that, very similar to that last play. And also, Cooper is going to run this route at this, his first step. It's just, it's going to be great. Look at this. Where it stopped, it totally looks like Cooper is running a go route, which go, a go route would actually also be a great route against this type of coverage. Man coverage, single safety deep. Cooper knows a go route would be great in this situation. Alexander knows a go route would be great in this situation. So both of those guys have it in their heads that, that is something that could be happening, and so that's why Cooper is faking as though that's what he's doing. But instead, he's going to try to swipe Alexander's arms away and cut to the inside. But watch Alexander's footwork here. He just takes a step back, but is able to stay with Cooper, and again, he's able to get his hand in there, which is it's not easy to do, but he does it a lot, and it's, it's, it's really important to be able to do that, and he can do that. It almost seems like a little bit like gone are the days of the true shutdown corners, you know, I mean, Darrell Revis has sort of been the last guy who you just put him on the number one receiver and completely take the number one receiver out of the game. There's other good corners, Stephon Gilmore is great, Richard Sherman is still great, and there's countless others, I won't name them all, but it does kind of seem like that's gone away a little bit, however, that doesn't mean that the cornerback position isn't important, it's still just as important as ever. And one other thing I love about Alexander is his hustle. Like, and this play is going to be a perfect example of it, where it's going to be a flea flicker, so they're going to hand the ball to the halfback, but then he passes it back to Stafford, who will be hanging out right there. And then they're going to send a receiver on the bottom half of the screen to try to run deep, see if he can gain some yards, you know, see if the corner is ready for a run, and then potentially he could go by everybody and get a touchdown. That's the hope for Detroit. And it's going to work out perfectly. I mean, as you see, it's just a receiver gets easily open, and at this point, I mean, Stafford's going to try to hit him. They're going to try to gain some yards. But what's interesting here is that the corner who is in that box, you know, defending that receiver is not Alexander. Alexander is over there. So he kind of had nothing to do with this play. But at the same time, now he looks up and realizes, okay, I have some work to do. There is a lion wide open past everybody. So this could easily be a touchdown. But watch his hustle. Watch how he just runs as hard as he can. And it's going to end up making this tackle. I mean... You, you just like to see it. It's just something that, that really matters in a football game is guys who are going to go out there and give their all. I mean, plenty of players would have just jogged at that point and it probably would have been a touchdown, but that's not Alexander. He's going to give it his all. He's a fun player to watch. He's a great player and he definitely is a reason why the Packers are currently trying to get a bye week. 
so far in the NFC, it seems like those are the three teams, the 49ers, the Saints, and the Packers. And, and for Green Bay, Alexander is definitely a huge part of their defense.